Hello and welcome back to our Everyday Watercolor Journal Ideas series. It is going wonderfully and I'm so excited to continue this with you. This is the last one we did and I just had to leave it on this page because they look even better the next day. Um, so I don't know if you've ever done that with watercolor before where you paint something and you're like, eh, it's fine, it's okay, but then you leave it to the next day when it's completely, completely dry and everything has had a chance to settle and then you're like, oh, I love it. The magic uh, watercolor fairies came or watercolor gnomes came overnight and made it beautiful. Uh, that happens a lot with me and my watercolors. So I just love these from our last video. They're so cute and they look even better the next day. But let's move on to a brand new page today. We are so close to finishing this journal. We should be so proud of ourselves. Uh, I have one, two, three, four pages left and that's it. And then these last few have like things that I put in there before. So four pages left and then we get to start a brand new journal. How exciting and also intimidating is that? So I would like to know how many of you have been watching this series and have journals sitting there ready to be painted in and you are afraid to paint in them. You're like afraid to put that first painting in there on the page. Well, I am here to encourage you to just start even if you know it's not going to be good. One of the best things um, is when you get a journal and it starts to look like this, you feel like so accomplished when it's all kind of fat and fluffy and the pages are a little wonky. At least I do. Um, you've got clips and things in here and maybe some extra stuff clipped in there for one reason or another, whether it's color swatches or whatnot. Um, it feels good. It feels like you're accomplishing things and you are, you cannot accomplish things without starting. So get out there and start. If you are watching this video right now and you have not started, your watercolor journal yet, go start it. Go paint swatches. Go do a whole page of just swatches. Swatch your paints and that will help break the ice. Okay, I will get off my soapbox now. For all of you who have started, I'm so proud of you. And then for all of you who haven't yet, I'm so proud of you because I know you will. Uh, okay, so we're gonna do something really simple today. Um, I'm kind of going back and forth with uh, how complex do I make these? Because these are journal things, so I don't want to make them too complex, but I get lots of great suggestions. Uh, but some of the suggestions are of things that like, I could do like a super complex painting on. But again, we're journaling, so I want to keep them simple. I want to keep them warm-up level, intro, beginner level. Uh, so we're going to do that. We're going to do something simple today. And then other things that you suggest, I may do them, but they might not be like a full like complicated piece. Okay. We'll still do some drawing. We'll still, but we're going to work on simplifying. With that being said, we are going to make some birds today, but these are going to be fun little illustrative birds that are going to start out as big blobby circles. We're going to add some details to them to make them bird like, and they're going to be lots of fun. So all you need for this is a brush. I'm using, I'll probably switch between, I'll use a size six round brush. Uh, Velvet Touch. I have my journal and I have my core paints over here and I'm going to pull out some colors and we're going to be doing some wet on wet. So let's get some circles down. So I'm going to put my first, it's just going to be a circle, maybe an egg shape, like an oval shape. All right. And I'm going to get some nice glossy water down. I don't want it to be like running or puddling, but I want it to have enough water that things are going to move. Now core paints, I use core, Q-O-R by Golden, if this is your first time here. These are my favorite paints right now. It doesn't mean I haven't used or don't use other paints, Daniel Smith and Windsor and Newton and um, uh, what's the one I just bought? Uh, oh, I have some Holbein here that I'm using. So, but these are just my favorites and these paints move. Oh, if you like wet on wet and you like movement, these paints really move. Okay, so I'm pulling out some phthalo blue. I have lots of energy this morning. I apologize if I'm overstimulating any of you. And I'm going to just go across the top. And I'm going to clean off my brush. 
And I'm going to just blend this out a little bit. And then I'm going to take another color. So that was phthalo blue. I'm going to take some of this. I have transparent pyrrole orange. And I'm going to put that along the bottom here. And I'm going to leave it kind of white in the middle. There's water in there, so things are going to keep moving and grooving, but we're going to leave it white. So let's do another one. Let's do a little one down here. And... Let me see here. I got some Quinn Magenta. Ooh, you know what? I think I'm going to end up doing some complementary colors here. <sighs> We've talked all about that. Oh, this Quinn Magenta. Look at it move. Whoa. It's got some legs on it. All right. A little too much. So I'm going to scoot you back up because I am going to do some complementary colors here. Who wants to see a green bird? Who doesn't? So these are our fantasy, whimsical. So I'm going to put this green in here. Oh my gosh, look at that green move. Woo. And you're going to see how complements when they're next to or near each other. I did not plan this. Um, this was not part of the lesson. <laughs> that they kind of make each other the, their best selves. They really set each other off and make each other more vibrant, more pigmented, or seem that way. Um, but when they do start to mix together, so like on this one here, if we start to mix these green and pink together here, it starts to be a brown kind of faded out color, which depending on what you're trying to do can be really beautiful. I think it works great on these birds. All right, let's keep going. Let's make some more. I'll put another one here. Got to do the other complementary pair, I guess. I got to do quadrocridone. This is going to move to this one really look at it cascade there. I'm going to kind of bring this one around the side. So I'm not just doing top and bottom. And I'm going to pick up some diorolide yellow for the back side or the front side. I don't even know yet. They're just little rock shaped ovals that are really colorful. Okay, let's keep going. Let's fill our page. Let's make some different sizes. We'll make this one smaller. And I'm not gonna stick to uh, compliments. I did our three, comp I don't even know where my puddle is. I did our three compliments. I'm gonna do blue and purple, kind of analogous colors. That's fun. And I'm gonna drop a little bit of water in there. Pew, pew. To really get things moving. Oh, that'll be interesting. Um, what else? What other? Oh, we could do more analogous colors if we want. Do this one. We'll do orange. And I can pick up a red. Let's pick up, I'm going to do a little alizarin crimson in there. There we go. And put one in here. I don't know if that was the best placement, but what other colors? Orange and red. Blue and purple, let's do some green. And I'll do a different blue. I'm gonna do this cobalt teal. Hmm. Again, I'm gonna drop some water in there. And my sketchbook is like not laying perfectly flat even though I've clipped it because we have so much going on in there. So you gotta be careful of that. 
All right, and I've already made some dot of something up here, a blue, so I'm gonna put one up here. I'm gonna put a big one down here. And these, you just gotta not take them so seriously and just go with the flow. Um, you can see I'm getting lots of cauliflowers and lots of water and interesting textures. And I think it's great. I'm going to use a different color yellow over here. So this is a little bit brighter. This is nickel azo yellow. And I'm going to do a quin gold. On here, I'm going to go back to, I've got lots of blue. This phthalo blue is coming up in lots of places. Do phthalo blue and magenta. Get some purple mixing going on. There we go. Okay, I'm going to let these dry and we'll come back and put on some details that will help them look more like fanciful little birds. All right, we're back and our little nuggets are dry. I'm drinking a little chai. This chai has so much cinnamon in it. It like is burning my sinuses. It's so good. Definitely wake you up in the morning. Okie dokie. So I have some brown here. This is a raw umber, but any brown will do. And we're going to add in some legs. So the first thing you have to do is figure out which way you want this little birdie to be facing. Um, so for this one, I'm going to have it facing this way. This is where the little beak is going to be. So I'm going to take its legs and put them out in this direction, kind of facing that way. And same for this one. This one's going to be facing the opposite direction. And some of these legs are just going to be behind other birds. I'm gonna make this one facing this way. And under this one, I'm actually gonna have facing forward. I think I can make it work with the beak and the eyes on this one. This one, I'm gonna have facing down. So you're not even gonna really see the legs. They're gonna be behind this other birdie. This guy. I guess should face that way. These guys are going to face each other. And you can see I'm putting on like little tiny talons on the bottom. But don't get too caught up in it. I made this one's legs really funky, but I'm going to go with it. All right. So now they all have legs. Let's give them some beaks. I'm going to get some more of this raw umber. And I'm going to put their beak. We're going to skip this one for right now. I'm going to put their beak kind of right. Uh, let's do this one up here. Right towards the front of their oval. Nice and tiny. Tiny little beak. Look at that. We'll do this one. And depending on where you put the beak will help dictate kind of where the bird is facing, if it's facing up or down. So if I put this beak way down here, that bird is looking down. If I put it way up here, that birdie's gonna be looking up. That bird has a weird shaped head. I'm gonna actually Change the shape of this one a little bit. Make him nice and plump. Drop in a little orange. Okay. And let's keep going with our beaks. This one is going to be, it's going to go right in front of this bird, but it's going to be facing kind of down this way, and this one's going to be up here. Boop, boop, boop. 
and this one's definitely facing this way and this one we're gonna let you face this way now gotta give these guys eyes and tail feathers as well I think we have to give them tail feathers so I'm just gonna pick a color that I think kind of goes with what they already got going on and I'm gonna give them some cutesy little tail feathers oh this one has is gonna have the beak facing forward let's see if we can do that so the beak is actually going to be kind of right in the middle pointing down and then the eyes are going to be on either side of it so this guy's tail feather would be whoosh, out behind it like that let's do this one And these are going to have tail feathers that run into each other. Don't worry, we got eyes left to do. So we got to do the eyes and any other details. This one, the tail feathers are going to be pointing down this way because the beak is pointing up. All right, I'm gonna give these guys eyes. I'm gonna use my Micron pen. You could definitely use um, Payne's Gray or Black. And I'm gonna put their little eyes right towards the front. I'm gonna put this one right here. I'm gonna give her eyebrows. <laughs> And right here and then whatever other little designs kind of like we did before that you want to put on you can so we can add to the texture add little wings add little designs on our birds but again this is a great way to just warm up your brush warm up your mind start mixing some colors so if I wanted to, I could give these guys little, little baby wings here on the side or little fun things on their head, little sprouts. Just some lines. This way, this one will have wings coming out to the sides. I don't know if I would do that again, but giving it a try. You can add to the tail feathers. And just make it a really cute little illustrative piece. There we go. There are our cute little watercolor birds, our illustrative birds. Um, super simple, just playing with color, playing with technique, wet on wet and then adding a little bit of doodle to make it fun um, and interesting. So go ahead and check out the description. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Share this with someone who you think may also enjoy this watercolor journal journey. And yeah, happy painting y'all and I'll see you for the next one.